Hey guys, Franco here. Today I'm going to talk about how to set up your own click track system for performance. Especially now in 2016, there are a lot of really neat pieces, um, and th even though not all of them necessarily need a click track, a growing number of them do. These applications could also be applied to pieces that don't necessarily need a click track, but would make life a lot easier. So I'm briefly going to discuss the gear that is needed to make this happen, as well as two different ways, an, an easier and accessible way that's pretty cost efficient, as well as my particular setup for how I get things done. Aside from your instrument and music, you're going to need a laptop, a digital audio workstation, an audio interface, and a few cables to make this happen. With so many digital audio workstations out, you just have to choose one that has the capability of sending multiple audio channels so that whenever they get to your audio interface, you're able to send them to different locations. With so many options for audio interfaces today, you only need one that has two outputs to the speakers as well as headphone outputs to yourself, the performer. I personally own a Focusrite Sapphire Pro 24, um, and it's done the job great. I've played so many recitals with this now. Um, it also has the ability to record, um, which I recorded in New York Counterpoint. I recorded several of my pieces with, with this equipment. Today, what I'm really gonna focus on is being able to use this and, and kind of achieve this through Ableton Live Lite, uh, which comes for the most part standard with a lot of audio interfaces that you buy. I know when I bought my Focusrite, I have a Sapphire Pro 24. It came stock and standard with that. Um, and I know several of my friends that have bought, bought um, audio interfaces all come with essentially a free version of a Lite um, kind of version without, without the full capabilities, but it's certainly enough to be able to do these things, you know. So now, um, we're going to open up Ableton Lite. And the very first thing we're going to have to do before we even start inputting anything is we're going to have to make sure that in our preferences, we go to record, warp, launch, and we make sure that auto warp long samples is turned off. Okay, so this is a program that's really used by a lot of DJs and a lot of producers, and they're using samples and, and, and tunes that have obviously a, a, a BPM tied to them. And because it's a DJ set, a lot of the times they want to keep them at the same BPM. So, but for our purposes, we really don't need it. So make sure that's turned off. Okay. So the very first thing, this is a standard window that comes up. Uh, we're not going to need any of these panels right here, the MIDI ones. Okay, we're just going to essentially need two separate audio tracks because one's going to have the playback for the audience to hear, and one's going to have a playback and click or just the click for the performer. Okay, so <clears throat> for this audio number one, I'm going to be using... The final playback, which is for the audience, um, right here. I'm going to put it in channel one, and I'm going to make sure that I go here into masters, and I'm going to configure these outputs. Okay, so in my audio output device, I have my audio interface connected, which is a Sapphire 16 inch 8 out. Okay, so that's good. Okay, I'm going to go out here, and I'm going to make sure that it's routed to channels one and two. Essentially channel one being the left, channel two being right for, for the monitor itself, which is going out to the audience again. Okay, so in the second channel, we're gonna do the seven, the, the, my, my, my click track um, that's gonna be going to my ears. As you can see, here's Pulsar right here with the click. So I'm gonna put it down there um, and for these purposes right now, I've essentially, since I wrote these two, this piece, um, which already had essentially a, a metronome behind it, I essentially just made, made the, the metronome with the very same project. Um, so I don't really have to clip anything or have to make sure that the, the metronome's nice and set uh, because that's going to be happening already. Okay. So <clears throat> when I go here, we have to make sure the same thing goes out here. I'm going to configure it. It's already configured for the output device. And I'm going to go to make sure that they're on channel 3 and 4. Okay. So what's happening here is essentially my audio interface is working as, as kind of a, a hub of several channel outputs. 
Um, so I've set the, 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 the playback that's going out to the audience to channel 1 and 2. And I'll show you here in a second. There we go. Channel 1 and 2 going out to the audience. And channel 3 and 4 is essentially going to be where I'm going to be mixing both of those and sending them to my ears. Okay, and I'll all, and you know, so once I've gotten this gotten going, then I'm going to go out. And every single audio interface has some sort of control. Um, this is the particular one that my interface has, the Sapphire Mix Control. There are a bunch of different ones. But essentially, this is a digital version of a mixer where you can kind of configure all the different settings. So as you can see here, DAW1, DAW1, Digital Audio Workstation 1, which is going to be, like I said, Channel 1 and Channel 2, because that's going to form the stereo, as you see here. Okay. And essentially, now because my my audio interface has a, a headphone jack um, for me to send things to my headphones, I'm going to tell it to have three and four going here. Okay. And essentially, what that's doing again, it's just um, I'm rewriting. If I really wanted to, I can mix something else. So I can put like the left channel of of the the playback to my ear, and then still have one ear be the other way. But for my purposes, my purposes, I want to just have it just be the click track. Okay, so essentially, that's pretty much what it what, what it really entails. With um, one thing, you know, again, even though we talked about it at the very beginning, especially with a program like this, make sure that the warp button is off. Okay, because then it's going to try and 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 uh, take it over to to a certain BPM without. Oh, the dog is whining. All right, um, cool. So that's pretty much the extent of this. I myself like to use Logic simply because I've had a lot. Of, I've had a lot more experience uh, recording, um, doing other projects with this. So I'm going to quickly show you how I do it through my system in Logic. All right, so this file is my performance file for New York Counterpoint by Steve Reich. Um, and as you can see here, I have two channels. Um, I have the speaker playback, as I, I've said right here, um, and this again is going out to to one and two, as you know they just simplify it here in Logic as stereo output. So I'm going through the system at at two at one and two. Um, let me just double check that my audio is routed correctly. Yes, my input device is on Sapphire. Okay, and then here in my in ear playback, I have a mix of both a click and um, and the piece itself so I can use just to use it to balance and as you can see here I have it set on on three and four output three and four and with everything else all these other three channels um, these are essentially cues for myself just to kind of uh, help as I'm going th along through the piece um, these particular markers are at different rehearsal letters because um, essentially what I did at first was I just had a metronome um, this is a little tricky piece so I just added a few extra cues just to help me uh, stay in spot. All right. So if I can just play here real quick, um, essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to be going back and forth between what you would hear. Okay. So here you can hear the in-ear playback, which is going on with all these other extra ones. And the speaker playback. It's the piece itself, okay, without any extra. Switch back. You can hear the cues themselves. So there in a nutshell is um, how to set up your own click. If you have any questions, please let me know um, at perezperk at gmail.com. Thank you.